Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. One Europa League, one Super Cup, 11th twice, 9th, 10th, 7th three times, and 4th twice in the league. That was the extent of Atletico Madrid's success before Diego Simeone was brought to the club. Since then, Atletico haven't finished below 3rd in any of his four seasons, in addition to winning 6 major trophies. But how has El Cholo achieved this success? In this video we take a look at how Simeone transformed Atletico Madrid. Just before we get into that though, if you're new around here, I'd appreciate it if you liked, commented and subscribed. If you want to see more match reviews, player and manager profiles and so much more, drop video suggestions below or tweet at Football Made Simple. Now let's get into it. And if you want to keep up with Simeone, Atletico Madrid as well as any club across the world, a great place to do so is OneFootball which is today's video sponsor. Be sure to download it through the link in the description to support the channel. Now, let's get into it. Simeone had been a top level midfielder during his career, representing Atletico Madrid over two spells as well as other top clubs such as Inter Milan and Lazio. But in 2006, he hung up his boots to become a manager, starting in the Argentinian league. He went through some tough spells amongst the six teams he managed, however overall he was a success, winning two major trophies. He had a brief spell with Italian side Catania, but it was when his former club came calling that everything changed. Atletico Madrid had enjoyed a new lease of life under Kike Sanchez Flores, winning the Europa League and the UEFA Super Cup, but still only finishing 7th in the league. But under new manager Gregorio Manzano, Atletico Madrid struggled heavily, and in fact by the time he was fired, Atleti were only 4 points above the relegation zone and averaging just 1.18 points per game, whilst only scoring 1.44 goals per game and simultaneously conceding 1.69 goals per game. Simeone's impact was instant and was a sign of things to come. In his first season, Simeone didn't alter the existing 4-2-3-1, not wanting to make too many changes at the same time. Instead of focusing on the formation, he dealt with the mentality and the actual playing style. The traces of his playing style were beginning to be prominent, with the team now being more compact in defence and depending on quick counter-attacks when going forwards. Ryder Malfalcao was at the peak of his powers in his centre forward role. He had the ability to hold up the ball played long to him, to allow Diego and attacking midfield to join him, or to give the team time to progress up the pitch. However, Falcao also had outstanding movement, meaning that he could probe for gaps waiting for a more direct pass in behind. With a combination of defending solidly and having a world class forward, Simeone led them to a 7 match unbeaten run to start off with. The Falcao dependence was shown, with him having over 3 times more goals than their second top scorer. Looking at the table after Simeone took over, Atleti were only behind Real and Barca, now averaging 1.68 points per game, scoring less with 1.36 goals per game but crucially only conceding 0.86 goals per game, a theme that would continue. This season culminated in Simeone leading them to the Europa League and finishing 5th in the league, their highest finish in over 3 seasons. 2012-13 saw Cholissimo in full effect. He knew the physical demands of his playing style and brought in fitness coach Oscar Ortega. He also got rid of key players in Salvio, Dominguez, Pacheco and Diego returned to Wolfsburg after a loan. He didn't have much to spend, a common theme in his early days but brought in Insua and brought back Diego Costa from loan along with Raul Garcia. Simeone focused on establishing a physical spine to suit his intentions. Courtois continued on loan and the formidable Godin and Miranda partnership became permanent. Suarez and Gabi played in behind Falcao and Diego Costa. Atleti often gave up possession, only having 48% of the ball, but they still conceded the least goals in the league with just 31. This was because of the defensive system they chose to implement. They also only took 13.2 shots per game, but took the highest percentage from inside the box. His strong defence was inspired by a 4-4-2 formation, although he mixed in the 4-2-3-1 in 37% of league matches. Of course the players are physical, but the defensive system was effective in itself. Broadly speaking, they would employ a 4-4-2 mid-block. Often they wouldn't press, but when they did, it was as a team and very aggressively, with the forwards waiting for a press trigger, such as a bad touch or bad pass, which allowed the team to swarm in a man-oriented press. But usually they allowed opponents to play into midfield, which would create space behind their defence. Aleti would leave space wide and in this pocket for the defensive midfielder. 
If the opposition played the pass into the pocket, Atleti would spring their pressing trap, closing off all options and winning the ball. But because Adler Turan and Koke would both rather be in the centre of midfield, they tucked in, allowing space wide. As soon as the ball did go wide, Atleti's lateral press cut off all options and the touchline acted as an extra defender, so they would often win the ball here. And naturally, a counter would be launched down the wing and towards the box. The strength of Juan Fran and Luis meant that Atleti were comfortable leaving them in 1v1s against the wingers, which allowed Turan and Koke to tuck in. But when opponents did get high up, the two banks of four would often fall all the way into the box to increase the odds of winning the ball when the cross came in, and Miranda and Godin's aerial presence suited this. Their press was intense, they had the most tackles per game and conceded the least shots per game, and their deep block meant that they conceded less than a goal per game. Falcao was still comfortably their top scorer, but Diego Costa was Simeone's ideal forward and began to have an impact. Atleti finished third, their highest position in 17 years, and won the Super Cup. But most importantly, they won the Copa del Rey against Real Madrid, their first victory over them in 13 seasons. This win cemented the club's faith in the manager, and now they implemented Simeone's tactics without hesitation, setting them up perfectly for 13-14. In 1314, Atleti were now recognised as a team to watch across Europe. His tactics were still similar, as he said himself, we're a tough team, strong, intense, powerful at counter-attacking. I don't want this to ever change. We don't know how to play any other way. Should we change our style, it would be a total disaster. Again, Simeone showed an ability to work on a shoestring budget, selling Falcao for 60 million euros, was bringing in key players in Jimenez, Villa and Alderweireld, and more, for less than half of that fee. The first 11 was largely the same, but Villa came in and Costa was now the main goal threat. In this season, he fully committed to the 4-4-2, playing it in 87% of league matches. He used a similar defensive mechanism, but we saw an increase in goals for the team. As previously discussed, Turan and Koke would both rather play central, which is key. Quick transition are at the core of their play, so even in controlled possession, they look to advance the ball into midfield as quickly as possible whether through long balls, straight to the forwards, or direct short passes into midfield. Atleti only averaged 26% of their time in their own defensive third as a result. But Gabi would often drop deep to receive the ball. At the same time, Turan and Koke would both tuck infield, forming a 4-2-2-2, allowing both Luis and Juan Fran high, who are both crossing threats. So, the opposition winger would often be drawn to the Atleti midfielder, who could also drop deep to create a space here. Via's movement meant that he could often drop as well to create a 2 vs 1 here where they could work across into the centre. Atleti often looked to overload the box in these phases to help their odds, with the wingers joining the two forwards in the box. But they weren't afraid to be direct either, with Villa often receiving the ball long to turn and play Diego Costa in. Due to their physicality, they were also always strong at set pieces under Simeone, scoring the second most in this season. Costa was key, stepping into Falcao's boots seamlessly, whilst Villa also contributed. Koke's creativity from the right was crucial to them once again. The season culminated with Atleti effectively winning a playoff against Barcelona to win the title, a semi-final appearance at the Copa del Rey, and a painful loss to eternal rivals Madrid in the final of the Champions League. Atleti were no longer dark horses, but now were one of Europe's biggest threats. However, in 1415, they lost key players in Felipe Luis, Costa, and Villa. Atleti were still not financially free, as they were now making plans to move to their new stadium. They still managed to bring in Correa, Griezmann, Oblak, and Mandzukic. The tactics, as always, were largely the same, but their dynamics were now different with Mandzukic and Costa up top. Whilst Correa and Griezmann did provide some space, Mandzukic meant that was reduced threat on the counter, as shown by the team going down to only one goal on the break. This reduced their threat, and in fact they scored 10 goals less throughout the season. But even in this supposed down season for the new Atleti, they still finished third in La Liga, in addition to a Champions League quarterfinal appearance and winning the Supercopa de España. Again, Simeone's tactical acumen was shown, with Griezmann and Mandzukic almost exactly replacing Costa and Villa's output. But it's interesting to note that in the following seasons, Simeone was not perfect in the transfer window. From 15-16 going forward, the La Liga TV rights deal was altered so that each team got an even share of the pot, as opposed to the old model which gave Real and Barca 90% of the revenue. 
The increased revenue didn't automatically equal a higher caliber of transfer, with Jackson Martinez, Vieto, Gamero, Gaitan and Vitolo all being brought in for over 20 million euros each to limited effect. Despite this and continuing to lose key players like Rodri, Griezmann, Hernandez, Carrasco and more, he has kept them at the top of their game. They haven't finished below third in the league and reached another Champions League final, again losing out to Real Madrid on penalties this time. By sticking with Simeone's tried and tested tactics and pushing through periods of apparent staleness, he led them to a Europa League win in 1718 and a Super Cup win in 1819. All of this means that in his six and a bit seasons of managing the club, the side have won six major trophies and reached two Champions League finals. It's not just the results on the pitch that have been impressive. Several teams have struggled when moving from one stadium to the other, but Simeone has seamlessly led the transition from the Vincente Calderon to the Wanda Metropolitano without a problem, finishing second in both seasons at the new stadium, whilst winning two European trophies in that time span. It's no exaggeration to say he's transformed the club, and he's done so by sticking to his core values. A 4-4-2 formation that allows them to be strong in defence and lethal on the transition, being aggressive off the ball when they do decide to press, canny manoeuvring in the transfer market, and establishing an unbreakable team spirit and cult-like trust in his method, which means that his players often outwork the opposition. But where will Simeone's transformation of the club end? Well, we'll have to find out. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.